Ohio State. Let's talk Ohio State. Ryan Day. Why is that a controversial name to bring up in terms of like guys in the hot seat? That's how, how I get it. You lost, you know, three games last the past two years that you probably are really frustrated about. It doesn't matter what he's done to that program. I mean, yes, sure. It was in a good spot before he's won so many games, so many games. Yeah. People are like, just, they just wanted to beat mission. Like, He's done so much. I mean, they're yeah, they haven't won the Big Ten two years. Yeah, they haven't won the national championship, but so much is focused around like Michigan or whatever. Dude, Jim Harbaugh. They were patient. Heck of a for, coach. Heck of a coach. They were very, very patient on Jim Harbaugh as he just got slaughtered and slaughtered and slaughtered by Ohio State. They were patient on him and it paid off. Uh, I think they should do the same with Ryan Day. They should be very patient. And what, what the thing is like, oh, be Michigan, be Michigan. It could happen that Penn State runs the table, Ohio State beats Michigan, and Ohio State just still doesn't make the Big Ten championship. So, like, enough of this, like, Michigan talk. Uh, look, yeah, you don't want to be the, the Ohio State coach that is known for losing to Michigan, but look, they were they were a play away from cashing my future for Ohio State to win the national championship last year. Yeah, they, I think they took for granted how, like, how easily it was to beat Michigan and how in a bad spot Michigan was for a good decade. Brady Hoke was fine, whatever there, but there was a good, a lot, large amount of time, you know, leading up to before Jim Harbaugh has really started having success there, where Michigan was not a really good program, especially on the level of Ohio State. But let's get into this team here. I mean, they did lose some studs. And you're looking at all those four key losses all on the offensive side of the ball. The problem is, is at this point in Ohio State with, with Ryan Day, you kind of just have blind faith that they're going to plug and play a quarterback that's going to be a monster. They got wide receiver depth galore. Two stud running backs that are actually both back. The question here, I in my opinion, is the offensive line. And we'll get into that. But first off, I'm going to say over under 10 and a half. I'm going to say no play. I, I don't think it's a play. I, I don't think they win. It's hard. It's going to be hard to tell me that they're going to beat. I, I can see a game where they lose to Michigan and or Penn State and then slip up to somebody else too. They go to Notre Dame, I believe, right, which is yep. with with uh, Sam Hartman. So we'll see how, how they do with that. Maybe a competent quarterback there at Notre Dame. So – yeah, what are your thoughts? What's what's your what's your feel there? Your play? Yeah, I have this as a push. Uh, really, because they're out of conferences, Notre Dame. Uh, this defense could be really, really, really effective this year. I, I'm a believer in Jim Knowles. I don't know why he got all the hate he did last year. Um, yeah, I get it. He had more talent, and they gave up. The one thing they couldn't do to Michigan is give up explosive plays, and that's exactly what he did this year. Um, I don't know. I guess it just sometimes happens when you're a little bit aggressive, but they return almost everyone on the defensive side of the ball. So I am very, very excited for that. Uh, I mean, a lot of big names, though, maybe not guys that have stepped up in a big way. Jack Sawyer comes to mind, right? Highly rated guy. Can he, can he be a guy? Can he be this a guy? The year. Yeah, I, I like Tommy Eichenberg. He's experienced, uh, which is Sometimes all you can ask for in the Big Ten. I think he's a good football player. Maybe oh, not an NFL talent player. guy. Maybe well, not an NFL still, guy. Still, Chambers is nice next to him. And then CJ Hicks is the talented redshirt freshman there. Yeah. Former oh. five-star guy that is explosive. Yeah, he's going to push his way onto the field. And he'd pair well with Eichenberg, who's a nice – I don't want to call him safe, but I kind of do in terms of you're going to be in the right spot, going to make plays, going to get everybody else lined up in the right spot. And CJ Hicks can just fly around and make plays. Yeah, I'll say Eichenberg and Chambers were not uh I don't know if they were injured. They just weren't active for the spring game, right? And CJ Hicks came in and he looked like a very, very effective football player for them in that game when I was watching. So I, I was a big fan of that. Also Kenyatta Jackson. I know he's just a redshirt freshman. <laughs> he looks like a monster. Do not be surprised if they find ways to get him on the field. Uh JT Tumaloa, I mean, obviously. Ugh, dog we know that ty hamilton's pretty good uh denzel burke their secondary is 
I like their secondary. I, it's going to be better than last year. Did you know they lost a bunch of guys? They had no DBs drafted last year, which yeah. for Ohio State is crazy, which to me means everybody comes back. That's good. They bring in a guy like Davidson, Igbenoson, and then also Jahat Carter from Syracuse too. Uh, that, that's good depth pieces at the worst case scenario. Guys that have power five experience. Yeah, guys that could push their way to start. I, I don't know that Davidson Igbenoson starts, but I, I, I do think Jahad Carter could could push Cameron Mar- Martinez for nickel time because he was really yeah. effective at Syracuse. I don't think he's transferred to Ohio State if he didn't think he had a chance to start there because he was perfectly comfortable at Syracuse playing, earning all ACC honors, whatever. Uh, he's a very, very good football player. Uh, the offense yeah. is kind of the – that's the big question mark, right? You know what you have at receiver. You know what you have at running back. The offensive line, you lose – you lose guys. You lose Luke Whipler. Uh, you lose uh, Paris Johnson. You lose Dewan Jones. Th- those are the three staples that made that offensive line really, really good last year, and they're gone. And do I love uh, Josh Fryer? I heard that I'm supposed to. I don't know that I do, but uh, regardless, they could be okay. But it, it still might be. It might take some time. So it it's tough that you get ND in week four to get that offensive line set. Like that's why that's why I think like an, an early slip up could happen because their offensive line might not have gelled enough. Which is why like by the time you get the Michigan, like forget about the inexperienced part on offensive line. Right, like by the Michigan game, your offensive line is hopefully, if it's not banged up, playing at its peak. Uh, if you have talent, even though they haven't played together pre- previous to that season, they've had eleven games to figure it out. Right, um, you know, Penn State's week like eight, so I, I think Notre Dame. That's a really, really interesting spot. If that offensive line does not figure it out, or figure itself out. Uh, I, I think that could be that could be a real problem. I I think. So uh, I do think Josh Simmons was a big time transfer. I think they really, really like him from San Diego state. Um, he's going to play guard. He's going to play tackle. I don't know, to be honest. So I might play right tackle for him there. I, yeah, I think he, he they might, like he... their guards. Uh, Donovan Jackson's their best offensive lineman, former five-star guy, really, yeah. really good at left guard. He was pretty good as a redshirt freshman. He's coming back and he's dominated in the spring. Matthew Jones is an old guy at right guard. And then they'll probably have Carson Hinsman at center. Uh, who's, a, who's a young guy, retro freshman. Is he ready yet? Probably not, but he put on some weight. He's up over 300 pounds now, which is good. Uh, but yeah, it'll be right that right tackle spot with Josh Simmons and then a couple other young guys uh, that they're looking at too. Yeah, I, so offensively, yeah, their biggest losses, of course, came. And CJ Stroud was a really good football player, but I am a, I'm not going to say I'm a Kyle McCord truther, but I am a Kyle McCord believer. I think it's like a crazy stat, like Ryan Day, like if he's a new starting quarterback coming in for their first season, they average like 4,000 yards and 40 touchdowns. What? That's crazy. So I, I still believe in Kyle McCord if they do. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think the question is about him having a good year. I think he's, he's going to put up numbers no matter what. I mean, how could you not with Marvin Harrison, like Buka, you know, Julian Fleming, even Carnell Tate as a freshman that, you know, from all reports, totally living up to the five star billing. It'll be about, you know, how elite can he can he raise the ceiling of this offense? Um, I, I don't I want to see Devin Brown push him in the fall camp and maybe in those those first out of conference games. So we'll see. They get IE to begin with. I wouldn't call it quite a tune up because it is technically a Big Ten game, but I think the spread will probably be well over twenty, maybe in the thirties. Yeah, it's a tune defense. Game. <laughs> yes. With all due respect to Indiana, it's a 10 home game. The defense, like you said, is is super interesting. I, I think that's going to be where they make their money and they make their, their biggest jump, you know, from year to year. And that gives them a chance to, you know, to stay in these games in Michigan, you know, Penn State. We saw the J the JT Tulem out Tulem out. Yeah, JT uh stepped up for sure. And he kind of saw the defense, you know, make some plays. And if they can if they can help this offense for sure. That's pretty dangerous. And with the talent on Ohio State, who knows? Cade Stover, too, I want to give a shout out to. He got hurt in that Georgia game. Yep. It, it, that was a big loss for him. He he's very physical, very, very good run blocker. Catch the ball as well. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't think on defense Zach Harrison's a loss. I really don't. I know he went like that. No. What the third round? And I don't think he's a loss. Come on, that was an but, upside pick. He 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 was not very productive at Ohio State. He's a good athlete for sure, but I, Jack Sawyer should be, you know, everything he is in, and then some. I agree. I agree. Just a good football team, but a no play at ten and a half. 